All right, ladies and gentlemen, hello and welcome to Ashes of the Singularity Escalation. Today I have a one versus one match that I'm casting live between R. Barnson as the PHC in the bottom right and his opponent, the red substrate, Shimbalama. This is a pretty big map. Mirak, the name of it, it's a 2v2 map, so there's a lot of resources spread out throughout the map and there's a few pretty wide attack paths as well. So I'm casting this just on my own. Uh, my co-caster is currently out. I don't actually know when he's going to get home though. So there's a chance that he may just sort of walk in and I'll be like, Blake, come cast Ashes with me. And I'm sure he would be excited by the opportunity. We have been meaning to cast more Ashes. And uh, finally, here we are. So we see our Bonson. Oh, I love this. He's actually boosting out the archers. So that's what I found to be pretty efficient for the the early capping, is you get one or two archers early on. Because they just one-shot the creeps. Um, can do it much quicker than the, the brutes, but you want to mix in the brutes as well. Soak up that damage. As for the substrate capping, it's it's pretty simple. You just got to go martyrs. <laughs> there isn't much reason to go reapers early on, because the martyrs are a lot faster. And they uh, don't have the energy, so obviously better for capping, but not quite as good versus the cruisers in particular. So these two players, they're pretty highly ranked in the community. I uh, I haven't checked their like ranks lately. I don't really follow the auto match sort of ladder, but I, I just play a lot of custom games, and I know that these guys are really, really up there, we'll, we'll say. So it's always a blast to play with these guys, whether that's against them or alongside them, and uh, casting them now is a, a whole new perspective. So, oh, quick airfield here for Arden Barnson. So that's interesting. Rushing out air units as the PHC can be a bit difficult there. The Hades not so good at sniping individual structures. They're more for taking out armies with their AOE damage. Um, but maybe it'll actually go straight for the the advanced air lab and then go for an air marauder because the air marauders. Uh, they are good against single targets like the extractors and the the uh, the engineers and the constructors, of course. So I don't know. We'll see what he did with it. I mean, the sky factories only cost metal and they're pretty cheap. So a lot of times, I like to just build one or two preemptively. Then you have the morale, and then if you, all of a sudden you need to get some anti-air, you just build a fury without having to first build a sky factory. So it's just about having that uh, preparation. And, you know, often you're low on radioactives, but have a fair bit of metal you want to burn. So just throw down a couple of sky factories. Why not? So pretty good expansion here. We can see that these players are expanding out quite quickly. And there's actually more depth than what you would think when it comes to expanding. If, if, you, if you compare a good player to someone that's new or hasn't quite mastered it as much, you will definitely see a, a difference in... And how efficiently they do cap but quantum relay already done here for our Bunsen. going for another one as well so personally what I love to do on a map that's this big is uh, go for a really quick amplifier on your nearby radioactives point it's not really a big map but for a 1v1 it's certainly larger than most uh, but this is a searcher that's a scout plane that sees everything that uh, Barnson's going for. So Shimbalana, he does have that vision, very important to see what sort of strategy his opponent's going for. He, uh, I'm sure he saw the airfield there, or the Sky Factory rather. He sees the armories in the front. Sees, uh, you know, he knows what's up. He doesn't see any tech structures. He doesn't have to worry about any, uh, any spawns or anything from the orbital fabricator. Sometimes players will rush those out and harass your back lines there with the, uh, the sentries or the incursions. You know, all that, all that uh, tomfoolery. Shimbalana seems to have a fair bit of uh, unspent resources here. It needs to get more assemblies. Yeah, it only has one assembly. Oh, sorry, two, but yeah, even two assemblies. Um, I think what happens is people aren't used to playing these larger maps all the time because these 2v2 maps aren't in the the auto match pool. So it's only when you're playing custom games that you'll, you'll come across these. So the, the build orders perhaps are more 
base off of a, a 1v1 map with less resources. So they have to sort of adjust that and make sure they do have more production. But we see him going for an aviary that's going to be building his, his air units. Um, doesn't have the the heavy air units until he gets the structures to unlock them. So that was, that was recently changed. But another aviary, so... Committing to the airplay would seem going for the gateway, so that unlocks the, the air rampager. Uh, Bunsen doesn't have any Furies produced yet, so he, he should definitely start getting some of those. Uh, air control is always very important, especially on a map this big. Harassing your opponent's supplies can be quite nice, but... I love this, got a Falcon as well. That's going to give him uh, excellent anti-air. And an advanced Sky Factory too, so a pretty big commitment to the air. Okay, there's actually a few martyrs looking for some harassment. A little bit too late to, to prevent the Sentinel from going down. That will complete. Not very good though against the, the frigates, especially not versus the substrate frigates because they're that, that squad count. But there's only three squads there anyway, so it doesn't actually matter. There's even some Apollos, so there's plenty of anti-air Arbantz. I don't think he scouted this, but he must have just sort of known his opponent. Didn't want to get caught off guard by any, uh, any nasty air raids. Yeah, there's actually constables all around the map. Constables, like the Sky Factory, only cost metal, so they're very cheap. Because generally radioactive is what limits you, and that's that's deliberate because it's the more rare resource used for more advanced units. Very quick energy projector, so that's going to unlock the the drone bay. Drone bay is a very powerful defense. Also gives him access to the EMP. EMP pulse. Uh, that's a very strong orbital again versus substrate. Takes out the shields. Pretty cheap. Not as expensive as, say, the plasma storm. So I do quite like getting that early against substrate. They don't get the nullifying that early on generally. That being said, though, if you have enough of the caregivers, you can just replenish the shield. So, you, you can counter the EMP without necessarily needing to just jam it. But caregivers, uh, you don't see that early on. Okay, we have a lot of assemblies now. I love this. Shimbalana cranking up his production. We see him draining his income there pretty hardcore, but nothing wrong with that. A nice cutoff maneuver here. We'll cut off some of these points. And already the tritium generators have been captured. The top and the middle... Bottom one was actually attempted there by Shimbalana, but didn't have enough frigates to clear out those creeps. And now Art Bartson will take it over. Another cutoff here, actually. So, it's something that I do quite like seeing is players using frigates on the harassment side of things. Martyrs especially, they're very fast. They have pretty good damage. So they are great for harassment, whether it's cutting off undefended areas or whether it's destroying extractors or, or engineers. You can do that quite efficiently. So... Um, yeah, well done so far. Let's see. Oh, wow. Look at this. We have artillery posts. They're pretty far back, so I guess they're in range of the Tyranium Generator, which is his priority. He, he really wanted to make sure he could bombard that middle location, uh, because it's quite well defended. Even the Exterminator turret there, that's the, uh, Heavy anti-dreadnought defense, very, very potent. But look how many air units there are. There's several of the Dominators in the air. There's a Rampager gunship. Okay, there's a drone bay there. No anti-air. Ah, uh, building at third, so... The Rampagers can snipe the Engineer down, prevent the, uh, the Engineer from, from completing that one. Or oh, building a forward listening post too, so once you get that radar detection. I do quite like how Barnson's playing this one. Oh, it's actually going for the middle. Pretty decent army here for both of our players. Looks like Shimbalana has the larger cruiser army. Several maulers and drone hives. This is the EMP. That's going to make a big difference, but will it be too late? The army's already significantly smaller for Sh um, Barnson. Looks like it is enough to turn the tide here. All the Immortals have been destroyed, so 
drone hives not so effective versus the the Athenas, especially because these Apollo cruisers they're able to shoot down all of the drones, making those drone hives largely ineffective. So really great unit composition coming out of our Barnson, but he can't push through here given the sheer number of base defenses. Going to need to whittle those away with the Artemis cruisers or the artillery posts, which seems to be the game plan here. Double cap of the Turinium generators now for our Barnson. So this is shaping up to be a pretty intense game. Just needs to make sure he doesn't lose too much of his extractors to these rampages. They, they fly straight past that constable. It's a very basic defense is the constable so it doesn't hold up against multiple rampages he's actually rushing out a, a hyperion dreadnought so that's quite nice but maybe a chronos would be better just because there's so many defenses here or if he sends it around the side uh, that would be pretty effective goes for one of the less defended areas so there's only a small number of defenses here. he could just muscle his way through that but this is nasty Rampage is taking out these engineers trying to build some constables. The constable there was upgrading to a falcon, so it's currently ineffective. Will be very nasty when it actually completes, but is destroyed. Uh, doesn't look like we have any Furies. There's only a single Fury squadron there, so it needs to get a lot more anti-air. It's a bit of a shame that R. Bunsen didn't go for his own scouting units to try and see how much aircraft his opponent has. Because you, it's very easy to scout. You just fly over their base and you see the double aviary, or the triple aviary in this case. You sort of get an idea of, wow, he must be going for a lot of air units. Okay, so that's trying to focus down the dread launch, but here come the Apollos. There's five Apollos. It's so much damage, and AoE damage especially. So these Dominators have to get the hell out of dodge. All the Rampagers were shot down. Dominators are just getting shot out for really no reason here. They should not be sticking around. They have no ground attack. They're purely anti-air. Big mistake there from Shimbalama. Oh, man. Must have been uh, managing somewhere else. That's costly. And the Dreadlaunch still pretty much at full health, so that Hyperion's almost done. Shimbalama should change up his composition here. He's, he's seen the Dreadlaunch, seen the progress of the Hyperion. He should go for the... Uh, the Eradicator Cruisers, those are very strong versus the, the Dreadnoughts due to having armor piercing. Dreadnoughts have significant armor, so they take reduced damage from most weaponry. Wow, cheeky work here from Shimbalama trying to build forward defenses. I think that was an, a, uh, the Avatar. It's an orbital that spawns an advanced engineer. So it's pushing out now with these units here, but it, it's a pretty weak army as far as anti-ground. It's it's mainly just anti-air and a bit of anti-building mixed in there, so... A couple of Athenas, I suppose, but... Not a very strong against a pure ground army, like all these drone hives and... Well... The drone hives, they are effective against, again, because of those Apollos, but there's a lot of Avengers. A lot more Maulers too, so... Gotta make sure you don't overcommit to anti-air, but... More cheeky work from Shimbalama. He's spawned in a avatar. Arbanson can use the emergency turret to uh, take this avatar out. That's what I like to do. Is whenever your opponent uses those the orbital drops, just drop an emergency turret or a serpentine turret. That's, that's uh, sort of what they're designed for. Okay, this is a bit of a throwaway here. <laughs> Sending in only a couple of cruisers. There's, there's four medics, so they can sustain the army in the, from from light attacks. Yeah, he's gonna let that finish. It's a pretty nasty cutoff too. There's a lot of extractors here, so certainly limiting the income of Arbanson. Meanwhile, the artillery post continuing to saturate this middle. There is a regenerator which will help sustain these defenses, but against four artillery posts, soon to be six, it's not gonna be enough. Hyperion has finished with a lot of supporting anti-air as well. I like how he has a, a nullify being built. The artillery posts are quite fragile. They can get taken out very quickly by uh, 
the drone hive swarm, for example. Oh man, these cruisers are just being sent into the firing line of these artillery posts. Needs to reposition those, just throwing away three units. Well, throwing away units for free. Yeah, there he goes. Pulls back his army. And while the right side, getting some work done. The right side of this map is rather resource rich. There's uh, triple rads here, triple rads there. Hope you guys like alliteration. It's rather resource rich with radioactives. Okay, spawns in some Saber 2. He's trying to take out the Artemis cruisers. I think not one of them, but the medic's going to be sustaining the other one. So the Hyperion goes down the left flank. I love this. Doesn't want to send it in and just die against these heavy defenses. See the Orbital Nullifier mixed in here as well. Therefore, Shimbalama doesn't want his buildings taken out by any kind of orbitals. Let's see what the uh, the quanta income is. It's two for Shimbalama, R. Barnson, 2.5. So pretty similar quanta income. Decent amount of air units. That's... Uh, Actually, it's only one rampager, though. Oh, no, no, just kidding. It's four rampages. Five. No, okay. Four and a searcher. So that's a pretty nasty strike force. And all the anti-air has moved out. So this base is rather vulnerable. The falcons are going to be great. But as long as the rampages stay clear of these falcons and they can get some work done. We are seeing Arbanson clear out this forward base, allowing him to reconnect his bottom left resource lines. But yeah, that's a shame. Arbanson didn't rebuild the anti-air that he had. He's going to lose several of these defenses. If we look at the resources in the top right corner, we can see a significant advantage for Shimbalama. More metal, more radioactives. That being said, he's floating a lot of metal. He's got 8,000 in the bank, so he needs to uh, crank up his production. I'd recommend getting an advanced assembly. Get a dreadnought of his own. A savage would be perfect. It's mainly costing metal, and that would be a great counter to the Hyperion. So, dreadnoughts are just an easy way to spend excess cash, specifically uh, metal. Depends which one you build. Bit of a strike force of air units for Arbanson as well. The air marauder gunships with support of the Furies. Okay, there's going to be a bit of a battle here. High ground advantage for R. Barnson, but numbers advantage certainly for Shimbalana. The EMP's thrown down. There was a nullify nearby, but it wasn't within range. Still, doesn't look like it's going to matter. There's just too many maulers. Takes out all these cruisers pretty easily. He's used that EMP a couple of times there, so that price does ramp up. May need to invest in more quantum relays if he wants to continue using those orbitals. I think this Hyperion's been too passive though. He should have sent it out much earlier on, on the middle here because now we already see, look, the double exterminator and those are deadly versus the Dreadnoughts. So he's going to have to use the Artemis cruisers to outrange them rather than just bombarding his way through it. Terenium's been pretty steady. A slight increase there for Arbanson, but far off being significant. We do see a couple of caregivers mixed in, so it does provide extra support. I think we're actually seeing the artillery post not be within range of these defenses, so if I hit alt, does it show the attack range? I mustn't do it as a spectator. It does if you're playing, it shows you the attack range. Yeah, I think it's actually too short. If he built those closer, he would have been in a much better position. They have long range, but it's... You know, it's not, like, the whole map. See, he has a radar, so he, he does have detection. Because you can, you can attack radar contacts. Okay, here we go. Takes out the pulverizer turret. There's actually a lot of air marauders there, so the anti-air needs to be pretty significant. We do have starburst turrets scattered throughout the base, so these marauders can't do much. I guess they can over here. There's a bit of a gap of anti-air. I love this, though. Double advanced. 
assembly. Maybe a uh, double is a bit overkill. Um, we see his rads is getting depleted pretty quickly, boosting one of those out. Might be worth just pausing that if he hasn't done so already. Oh, wow. The Hyperion army went the long way around, and as a result, Shimbalama was able to find a hole in the defense to go for the cutoff once again. Using the Dominators there, the airplanes, to, to get vision, see where his defenses are not. So it's deliberate positioning here, but here come the Air Marauders. The Drone Hives are anti-air, so this could be a suicide attack by the Air Marauders. No EMP, so pretty costly. The Air Marauders not very strong versus anti-air in a heads-up fight, even though the Drone Hives aren't dedicated anti-air. I guess they'll, they'll win this one regardless, but you know, pretty costly there. Definitely a... Uh, more expensive army in the Emeralders. They cost a lot more radioactive than the Drone Hives, but I guess that was worth it in the end. Here come the Dominators, though. They can shoot those down pretty easily. It needs to call in the Furies for support. Yeah, that's going to be a bit of a mop-up. Four of them survive. So at least he's able to recover some of them. Yeah, <laughs> look at that. The Savage is almost completed because of how much resources he had banked up. Our Bansen down in only 5 radioactives per second. This is really low income. It needs to reboot all of these. I think these were taken out by the, uh, the air units there. I missed that one, but he's definitely losing his, his Rad's income. Building another Dreadnought, but it's quite far off, lacking any radioactives. This is a pretty weak army, though, in an upfront fight. This is going to get thrown away without achieving too much. But I just love how aggressive shimbalama has been. His cutoff maneuvers, his air raids, really limiting the income. 40, 49 radioactives income. Wow, he has so many harvesters on this point. Has the boost orbital as well, giving him a huge amount of rads income. It's that's almost 10 times the amount of radioactives. That's that's enormous. And this second dreadnought is that's a retributor. Overmind would have actually been better because it has the anti-air with all those drones. But Retributor should be pretty damn effective too. The Hyperion, finally it's going in. It's been a bit of a dead weight here. It hasn't done much. But this is a decent fight. We'll get some free experience as well. Hyperion's very powerful versus all these cruisers. And this side is actually less defended. Still should be within range of the exterminators, though, if he does push through. So that's going to be a bit of a problem. Has one Artemis mixed in, but that'll take a while to actually flush out all those buildings. Yeah, only the most forward ones firing, or maybe the forward two. These rear ones certainly aren't within range. Now it's Shimbalama who's taken control of the top right Tyrannium. So, Art Bonson has his, his, his banking excess metal here, so he should just get a couple engineers and just build like 10 constables. There's no reason to not just spam anti-air defense when you have that much excess metal. He's got 3,000 floated up. Rads is his real sink. Still hasn't rebuilt these radioactive deposits. Radioactive extractors, rather. That's really crippling. Oh man, there's so many unbuilt extractors. I don't think he even has, uh, you know, he doesn't have as many amplifiers, he doesn't have the Optimize Orbital. Oh, uh, oh, that one does. I just discovered a tooltip error. It says Amplify Orbital, should say Optimize Orbital. Huh. It used to be Amplify, then I changed the name because it was really confusing because you have a structure called the Amplifier and then you have a an orbital called Amplify, so it's a bit of, you know, a bit superfluous naming, so now it's optimized, so it's very distinct. Man. Shimbalama, 157, okay, that's because he used the boost, I was going to say. Still 97 metal, that's almost double his opponent here, I love how Shimbalama's been playing for this late game economy, even his quanta income is significantly more... Wow, that was a orbital bombardment, but it actually didn't do much. There was very little there. There was only a couple of defensive structures. So that seemed like a bit of a waste of quanta. Meanwhile, 
Oh man, if he used it here, that would have been so good because there's exterminators, there's several eradicators. This is this would have been perfect for the upper bombardment. So that was that was really just a waste. Makes me upset. Considerably. Another cutoff maneuver here by the saboteurs of Shimbalama. The army is repositioning and there is eradicators mixed in. Yeah, the Hyperion's now within range of the Exterminator taking some damage here. There is medics for the health regen, but oh man, he can't take this fight, not with all the cruisers moving in. Look at how quickly the Exterminators just shred the Hyperion. Eradicator's giving a bit of a love tap as well. Yeah, he pulls back from this one. So he should, he should break up his army. Armies, uh, you know, they're great in combat, but there's, there's a lot slower when they're all clumped up like that. Took out a couple of structures, but this is a very tough position to crack. And now there's a lot of the uh, nullifiers, probably too many, but it's going to prevent any orbitals here. So the orbital drone relay and the subspace stream are both on the field, so all those orbitals are available here for Shimbalama. Seems to be a lack of jamming. Has to be careful of the nanite assassination. It's very powerful versus the, the Dreadnoughts. Okay, so rebuilt these rads, but not this one. So something that's very useful is, if you look at the mini-map, you can see that the different regions have different icon sizes so look at look at the, i think you can see my cursor i hope so the the triangle here on the mini map it's quite a small triangle where this one the triangle is much larger it's probably about double the size and so that tells you whether or not you have the extractors built in it and also if you zoom out to the strategic zoom uh if they are still if they're gray like here see that those are gray that means that they do not have extractors built on them where the blue ones do. So you got to monitor these things. Zoom out every now and again, have a look. Where haven't I built my extractors? Because it's so important. If you lose those extractors, you have to rebuild them. And it's pretty easy to see by using either the strategic zoom or just looking at the minimap icons. So good, good UI design in that sense at communicating information in a very subtle way. A lot of defenses here, triple or double oblivion, more sentinels being built. <laughs> Can't attack through that one. We might be able to actually, given that he has three of these dreadnoughts. That being said, we are seeing Arbanson take the majority of the map and that can translate to better economy. Certainly hasn't yet, far from it, but uh, once he takes this back and once he builds all these extractors, then Chimbalama has to be careful. Building harvesters is great, as are amplifiers, but extractors are certainly more cost-efficient. And we're seeing these orbitals continue to be a nuisance for Arbanson, who isn't building the orbital jammers, isn't building the smarties to prevent those saboteurs from getting work done. Now this is a huge army. Pulling back to the defensive line, drone bay, repair bay, more reinforcements as well. Still these RD posts sniping some cruisers. The air raids continue. Still a lack of anti-air. There is a Falcon here though, so that's going to be nice. Uh, lacking an anti-air up here as well. And this is this is the dream, because there's so much rads here. Holding this would be really important for Arbanson trying to catch up his, uh, his, his radioactives deficit. Also, sending over some Furies to snipe these harvesters would be so effective. Here we go, the Falcon's now opening up. Falcon has splash damage, so its single target isn't so impressive, but multiple rampages can get taken out after a few volleys. Especially versus the Dominators. Because they get very clumped up. 
significantly outnumbered though. Only single falcons. I think a falcon costs the same price. Probably even less than a single rampager. Or at least in terms of rads, not quite in metal. But here come the Furies. A little bit late to the fight though. They should have gone in and sniped the rampagers. But looks like the Furies are outnumbering the Dominators significantly. Meanwhile, about to be a ground battle. There's a Chiron cruiser mixed in there for the teleporting reinforcements. Sniping out the orbital nullifier is going to open up those orbital abilities. Hope he uses the jamming orbital once that falls. I don't know if he can fight this heads up. He does have that Dreadnought, but is it going to be enough? It's level 2 and almost level 3. Uh, Barnson floating a bit of money here. Should be churning out that Prometheus. Here we go. Not a good formation. The Hyperion in the back of the army, not facing the forwards. Eradicators have a lot of range. They are sniping away. Meanwhile, the middle of the map, pushing forwards into the base defenses. The Oblivion's starting to do some damage. The Overmind's almost being destroyed, but the defenses are crumbling. There goes the Overmind. Here come the cruisers with the medics and the frigates for support. Pretty decisive victory here for Arbanson, but the bottom left. Finally pulling the trigger. The Hyperion does go in. It's taking a lot of damage from the Eradicators. Lack of jamming here for Arbanson. Level 4 is the Hyperion. It's going to have a lot of regen. The drones, the regening hull. Eradicators can't focus him down quick enough. The Polo's taking out all these drone hives. Artemis firing their rockets from afar. Let's see if he can take it out here. A single Nanart assassination would make a big difference. But maybe it actually will fall here. 5,000 health and dropping. Yeah, that's going to be all she wrote for this Hyperion. Almost level 5, but not enough. There it goes. All the Eradicators surviving. Furies not going to contribute much here. In the top right, no signs of any battle. So a win and a loss there for Arbanson and Shimbalama alike. Prometheus and a small complement of supporting frigates and cruisers going to be reinforcing this Tyranium Generator. Emerald is looking to snipe down these units. There's a bit of anti-air, but let's see if it'll be enough. Oh wow, Drone Swarm. Drone Swarm can also attack air units, so it's, it's a pretty versatile orbital. As long as they're within range. Yeah, they are now. These trades have to be a lot better given for, for Arbanson, and given how far behind he is in income. When you're behind, trading evenly is not enough. There's a fair bit of quanta in the bank, does Arbanson. Likewise, Shibalana as well, so. Throwing out some, or throwing down some of those orbital, rather the quantum upgrades, could have turned the, the favor in that fight. Could have turned the, uh, turned the tide, I should say. Turned the tide in his favor, is what I was getting at. And, uh, I think he's, okay, here we go, nice. He's, he's pulled his engineers in to boost out the Dreadnought. That's what you want to do. You want to make sure you, you're spending all of your resources. Oh, wow, orbital strike comes down rather the antimatter detonation. That being said, he's able to pull out most of his units. He's going to lose a bunch of cruisers. Uh, even the Dreadnought gets tagged there, so pretty deadly. There wasn't any jamming, so uh, very good use of that ability there by Shimbalama. That was pretty expensive too, 600 quanta, but his income is quite high at this point. Throwing down a drone swarm as well. Ah, uh, Barnson still at only 2.5 quanta per second. That's not very good. We are almost, oh my god, 40 minutes in the game. That's a long time. So, you should definitely have more than 2.5 quanta per second at this late in the game. Yeah, I think this is going to be a... Uh gradual defeat for Ah, Barnson. We can see his economy still hasn't fully caught up. It's recovered a bit, mainly in terms of the radioactives, but needs to needs to recover a lot more. It's it's exactly double the metal income now, Shimbalama, over his opponent. And that's only metal. Quanta, uh, of course, that makes a big difference there for those weapon upgrades, the health upgrades, all the orbitals, which uh, do ramp up in cost especially, so 
another reason why you really need to get more quanta. Double Dreadnought, Overmine, and Retributor. Several Destructor Artillery Cruisers to take out any defenses, which it seems to be there aren't. What's the game plan? He needs to do something. If he if he went for this cutoff, that would be that'd be fantastic. That would make a big difference. That would cut off a lot of resources. And he could probably do it too. Triple Dreadnought's pretty effective here. There's only... Well, there's three Eradicators, so... I don't know, maybe not. Still no jamming here, though, so he could use his Orbital Strike. But he already used one. This is going to cost him now... I think 800 Quanta, which is... That's a lot. He can't afford that. He's... He's... Oh, no, sorry, he can. He has a lot of Quanta banked up, but uh, not much income. So he's... He must be behind in upgrades. I would certainly wager. Cut off here now. That's going to be taking a lot of the Rad's income. Ah, oh, Barnstead down at 14 radioactives. It's a shame. No refineries. This one doesn't have the optimized orbital, so just not good eco management. Well, not as good eco management, I should say. What I do like, though, from our uh, Barnstead and how there's double orbital nullifiers there. One of them can be sniped down pretty easily, but double, it's a lot harder to take those out. Oh, he's pulling his Dreadnoughts back. Is he going to go for the middle? If he takes out all this production, that could be pretty effective too. Well, we see Shimbalama going for his Juggernaut, the Eye of Darkness. A very deadly versus multiple Dreadnoughts. Against a large number of cruisers, it's an anti-ground powerhouse. Look at this. Our, uh, Shimbalama has all of these metal points here. He's expanding every, even amplifiers. Such good play from Shimbalama. He's going to have to try and defend this. This could cut a swath through his entire right side of his base. The Dreadnoughts are pretty slow, so it takes a while to get there, but he has four of them. So he could probably win this. A lot of medics too. They make a big difference in those Dreadnought fights. Shimbalama tightening the noose. Containing him in the base, the right side, the middle, the left. Nowhere to go, Arbanson. Getting a little claustrophobic in his base now, it seems. However, these destructor cruisers trying to take down some buildings, but the arty installations are just wrecking them. Especially with uh, that repair bay. Shimbalama is committing to his Dreadnought push. Maybe he'll pull back when he sees the large army that's that's been rallied to defend. But that, that large army there would have been sent out had it not been for this push. So even if this push fails, that's still going to be successful in, in keeping Shimbalama's control of the map. Well, I don't like this at all for Art Barnson. He's going for metal refineries. He should be going for radioactives refineries because that's what he needs is radioactives. He's, he's maxed out on his metal storage. Uh, Rads really is what's limiting his production. Okay, the Dreadnought battle is about to happen. Double Prometheus, double Hyperion. This will be very beneficial for our Barnes in that it will give him extra experience and levels for his Dreadnoughts. These are both Dreadnoughts that scale very well. Just needs to make sure he doesn't lose this one here, the Hyperion. But yeah, it should be a pretty easy fight. They're all level 4 now, so this is a really good engagement. Almost level 5. 
Didn't push during that. Shimblama should definitely just get this Geranium Generator in the top right corner. That would give him a, a lot more of an economy lead. It's 10% per generator. And also uh, increase the Geranium income significantly. It would triple it. it looks like he is committing to this one. He's taken out one of the Orbital Nullifiers. Eradicators are very good versus buildings as well. Dreadnoughts are all out of position. Need to join the fight here. There's actually several of these sky cleansers. They can shoot down the the drones from these drone bays, but it doesn't matter. It looks like there's so much units you can take out of these defensive line pretty quickly. So I love how he did push while these dreadnoughts are out of position. All three drone bays are destroyed now. Strat Bomber has joined the fight. Very deadly unit versus those ground armies. He actually threw away all of his dominators, so he can't shoot this out of the sky now. Needs to try and reinforce with his drone hives as they have anti-air. Man, that's so deadly. The eradicators can take a couple of bombs, but eventually the strap bomb will just take them all down. Hopefully the uh, strap bomb will go down. We actually have a couple of sky enders here as well. Sky cleansers, rather. Okay, give us a healing up the eradicators as well, so... Should be all she wrote for our Barnson. His Dreadnoughts will be joining the fight here. Maybe he'll, he'll be able to defend this push. I have Darkness about two-thirds done. He should actually be boosting this. He has a lot of resources. 14,000 radioactives. 6,000 metal. Uh, how many eradicators is that? Looks about 10 to me. Decent amount of medics there. Here we go. We should see at least some of these dreadnoughts go down to the, the sheer volume of eradicators. Even a savager as well joining the fight. Anti-dreadnought. A dreadnought of his own. He hit level 5. I think he used one of the instant heals. Wow, the draining beam from the Prometheus taking the Savager very low quickly. Hyp Hyperion does drop. The Eradicator is still looking solid. Okay, give us for the regen. The overcharge Prometheus taking out a couple of the Eradicators, so... It's going to be a close fight either way. No orbitals have been used yet for either of our players. All the supporting units have been destroyed by the Drone Hives. There goes one of the Prometheus Dreadnoughts. Still a large number of the Eradicators. GG. That was really well played by Shimbalama. I, I love seeing how he was able to simultaneously focus on his economy, getting all those amplifiers, all the extractors, getting his harvesters built up in the, the radioactors region, while simultaneously also continuously putting on pressure, taking the cutoff regions of his opponent, uh, just making those air raids be very effective at taking out the metal extractors. We see a significant amount of quantum upgrades invested. Uh, resources, look at that, almost double. That's that's crazy. Uh, Bunsen definitely being outclassed here. I think his biggest mistake, though, was not building those radio uh, those radioactives extractors when he lost them. It's, it's just so important. I did harp on about that for some time, so I, I won't do that again. But GG, well played. Uh, that was a really nice game. Hope you enjoyed this cast. Subscribe to the channel for more Ashes of the Singularity content. My name is Callum McColl, designer for Ashes of the Singularity, and I'll see you next time.